chase mastery, not money. There's a quote that I came across that said, you don't have the life that you want to live because you haven't become the person worthy of living that life. And for the longest time, I was stuck in this situation where I was in a place and in a job in a business that I created that didn't give me the time and location freedom to actually enjoy life. And what I mean by that was I grew up watching a lot of YouTubers, Instagram influencers, living this massive dream life where they travel overseas and they work overseas while earning money with their partner and just having the freedom to do what they want. But I was stuck in four walls in a physiotherapy clinic that I built, not really feeling the passion and excitement that I once had for it. And when I was in this whole position, right, and I'm just looking at some stuff here in my phone, like just some old photos and notes that I wrote to myself, it was this whole thing where I had diary entries that I wrote to myself, speaking to myself on how I just wasn't excited anymore of, you know, waking up at 7 a.m. and just having to go to work. And as much as I was helping people, it felt like it was just draining me and I couldn't give back anymore. And I got to this point where I didn't have any work-life balance. I just had, I got to this point where I was doing 50-hour weeks, I was literally burnt out from the back-to-back -back patient side of things. And at that time, I was building an online social media presence uh, through TikTok uh, and Instagram. And TikTok really blew up for me. I went to 250,000 followers in the span of six months. And I met a lot of creators, a lot of creators who were doing 60K deals with brands, creators who are doing 300K a year purely just of TikTok. And I'm here feeling like I'm working three times as hard with more skill, more talent than most of these people. And just not really... Re realizing what the problem was right so it was at that point that i started to look at money as being this thing that's going to really help open up this next door for me um you know because at that time it's like for me money was freedom the more money i had the more money the more options the more opportunities i was able to, to kind of get into and therefore i started gravitating towards things that i thought at that time would help me make more money so number one was getting into e-commerce businesses so i start i started health products i started uh activewear brand which at the time was oversaturated i don't even know why i started that but it was with my wife and um made a couple of sales a couple hundred dollars online but nothing too crazy right this health product that i started was to help back pain um was a good product but again just wasn't in demand in the market and it wasn't until i opened up um, an account, a trading account to go to day trading that I really saw the, uh, I guess you could say the consequences of really just chasing money for what it is. Um, I think I spent about four, five, maybe six months doing day trading and I lost about $40,000 um, really just trying to day trade and make money, right? I think it was this thing where I saw it as this skill that I could just learn and as, as, as long as I understand the skill, put money in, get money out, it was simple as that. But obviously, uh, day trading game is a lot more complicated and uh, there's a lot more things at play. And I think from there, that really taught me that lesson where, you know, just chasing money or going towards money or things that you think will just give you money generally isn't the best way to go. And the reason why is because it doesn't necessarily or usually align with your strengths and who you are. Uh, the most success that I've ever had with anything that I've done is things that have been in super alignment with myself, um, with my morals, my values, my skills, my strengths. Um, and not just getting into any random industry or random niche or random business because of the sake of this is going to make you a lot more money. Now, while money is important, it shouldn't be the main driver of why you get into things. It shouldn't be the main driver why, of why you make decisions. And it wasn't until I started working with my first business coach who at that time I spent $50,000 with and it was a lot of money at the time. I just saw that go out of my bank account and I was like, wow, this is happening. That I started to realize that a lot of the success that a lot of these people that I look up to uh, come from inner work. And when I say inner work, it's getting over these things of self-doubt, imposter syndrome, these you know things that you maybe grew up with that limiting belief-wise, which was just stopping you subconsciously from doing things that you wanted to do. And as I started working with this business coach, uh, and this coach did about $300,000 in six months uh, selling a course online. As soon as I started working with her, I realized how little strategy comes into play, how little skills and knowledge come into play when you want to build something amazing. And why I say that is because, you know, uh, a coach that I look up to a lot, which is, uh, you probably know yourself as well, um, yeah, Tony Robbins, a uh, huge life coach in America. Um, he's always saying, you know, business is literally 80% psychology and 20% skill or 20% strategy. And the reason why he says that is because a lot of the success that a lot of these people have is from this mental grit. It's from this mental um, endurance to be able to regulate your emotions with the ups and downs. And if you are if able to regulate these emotions, you can then make the best decisions for you to then take you to that next level. And the thing is, as I started diving deeper into inner work with this coach that I was working with, 
I started realizing, yeah, how important this internal game was. And what that means was, you know, being able to, you know, have things not go your way and making the best out of it. Having, um, building something and not having any expectation where it would either fail or succeed, but just focusing on the fact that you're giving your best effort and that's all you can control. Because pressure is this whole thing that we put in ourselves that that's an external thing, right? Pressure hypothetically doesn't exist. Um, you know, you have your top 1% athletes who perform amazing under pressure, you know, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. Uh, I watch basketball, so that's why I'm referring to these athletes. Um, and I played basketball back in the day as well. Um, but the reason why they can handle pressure so well is because they don't, they don't attach themselves to an outcome. They don't attach to themselves whether they're going to make the shot or miss. What they attach themselves to is the things that they can control, which is at that time is giving the best effort, is making the best decisions of should I pass, should I shoot, should I cut. And it wasn't until I detached my emotions from these outcomes that allowed me to really see, okay, this is what the secret source is and really finding success in everything that we do. And that is just focusing on best effort. And the more you can detach yourself from these outcomes, the less paralysis by analysis you start to have, the less, the less overthinking that happens, right? Um, and someone who grew up in this, uh, you know, uh, Asian background, uh, you know, where accolades and achievements are such a, a thing that's looked up upon uh, being in the health profesh- profession where education is just based on grades right it was really hard for me initially to detach from those outcomes but as soon as you do you start to realize that the money or the success right comes after that internal work happens because your internal wins then refl- reflect your external wins which is the money the success the business the cars whatever else it is you want in life and it wasn't until that day or those those months or that year that I worked with that business coach that I really started to see that it's not about chasing money, but it's about chasing mastery. And that mastery can come from really focusing on just inner mastery. And then once you have inner mastery, then focusing on skill mastery, talent mastery, actually getting good at things and being able to lean into things that you're actually genuinely interested in so that you can actually see the success that you want for yourself, whether it's monetarily, lifestyle-wise, and X, Y, Z. And again, maybe you might have to have a lesson like I did where you lose $40,000 day trading. Your lessons could look different, but that was my lesson for me straight away that internally I knew chasing money is the worst thing you could ever do with decisions. And the best thing you can do is is actually investing that money into yourself, into working with coaches and getting into proximity and rooms with people who are doing what you want to do. Because the only way for you to get things to feel real is to actually see people who are just human beings doing what it is that you want to do. So to give you a better picture of what I mean by proximity and what I mean by getting in the rooms is imagine yourself right now uh, staying a week with the best athlete in the world. Let's just say LeBron James, right? Arguments are going to probably come, but let's say LeBron James. After a week spending time with him, I would probably 100% guarantee that you would start to adopt his habits of training, diet, the way that he thinks, the way that he moves, things will just start to feel more and more normal for you because you're around people whose normal for them is at this high level. And the more that you can put yourself in rooms with people who are similar to that or people who you admire, naturally you'll start to adopt their thoughts, their beliefs, which then lead to different actions and actions then lead to a different reality, right? And it's just understanding that by changing your thoughts, which then changes your beliefs, which then changes your actions, is then what actually formulates or creates your reality. And it always has to start with the thoughts. And the money side of things, going back to what I was talking about before, is that when you start to chase money, you start to just change the action without changing the thoughts and beliefs. And these thoughts and beliefs could be, maybe you have a lot of money objections, maybe you aren't you don't have the self-worth that you feel like you should have or need to charge, you know, X, Y, Z for your products and services, premium prices, right? It's all these blocks in the way that if you don't overcome internally, it's going to be super hard for you to action the things that you want to action. Now, yes, you can get rich and successful in X, Y, Z without this inner work. I mean, anything can work. But the difference between the two people who have done the inner work and people who haven't is that the people who get to that point as a result for the inner work are generally in places that they actually enjoy and generally give them excitement every single day, right? It's this massive alignment of life, career, and work all all encompassed into one. Um, and it's this concept of being able to have this lifestyle that feels like play and be able to get paid by playing is where you want to sit. 
because anyone can get rich, right? You can sell whatever the hell you want tomorrow, get super, super rich, but then have a miserable life. And the reason why is because there's so much misalignment in your life that you aren't able to get the fulfillment and satisfaction that a lot of people who spend more time with the inner work and the inner self get and achieve with wherever it is that they want to go. Now, my clients who I'm working with are doing 10K, 20K months online with their online fitness coaching business, with their digital products. And the reason why they're able to do this is because they've made those internal changes first. And yes, why that might be amazing wins and amazing for you to really strive for that first 10K, 20K month online, the biggest wins that you ask all my clients with, if you sit down in front of them and you have coffee with them, is that they've now been able to lean into their authentic self. They've been able to lean into the confidence they need to show up online. They've been able to take the leaps that they never knew that they could take, whether it's quitting their nine to five job, going full-time online, being able to go online and share their opinions without friends and family giving any, you know, I mean, essentially them not really caring about what anyone else and anyone else thinks. And it's these big internal wins that then allow them to have these big external wins that you see, you know, that are the 20, 10, 10, 20 K months online. And it's when you start to unlock that for yourself is when you start to really see these wins happen. So if right now you're feeling that you're not in a position that you want to be in, maybe you're in a place, in a job, in a business that you actually don't really enjoy, that doesn't light you up every single day. It's probably there's a lack of internal alignment that's happening right now that you need to address first so that these external wins that you want for yourself, whether it's more time and location freedom, more work-life balance, time with your partner, right? More time at home with the kids, whatever that is. It has to be this internal shift and alignment with yourself to be able to see these external wins. And if you don't know where to start, I'd probably say the first thing you can do is actually just going online and finding people who are living the life that you want to live. And when you do find these hand, when you handpick a couple of these people that you see online, really going deeper with a few of them and really seeing, okay, look, is there a way that I can get into the rooms with these people? Is there ways that I can get into coaching, mentorship, uh, masterminds? Like how can I get in the same room with these people so that their reality starts to feel like my reality and makes that feel real? And the sooner you can close that gap, the more that these changes will feel easier and feel like flow for you. Because the the the, the most the biggest myth in this whole space of building online or getting to a place where you want to be is that it has to be hard and it has to be a grind. In reality, it can feel like flow, it can feel easy. But the best way for you to do that is to do that with people who are already living their life. All right? And by getting that getting to those right rooms, you're able then to quantum leap yourself years ahead, miles ahead of other people who don't understand that concept. Right? Invest in yourself, don't chase money, chase mastery.